In April of 2020, Apple launched the second generation of the iPhone SE after four years of no updates to the iPhone SE line, and the iPhone SE 2 with the iPhone 8's design and the iPhone 11's internals sold for about two years before being discontinued. And it was a $400 kind of budget-centric phone. It was a really weird phone, but in 2024, does this phone hold up? The primary complaints about this phone was, in 2020, its outdated design, which features a home button, thick bezels, and a single camera. The SE second generation also had a battery that was small, even for 2020's budget phone standards, for being on the border of $100. This phone has certainly lost most of its value in 2024. The truth about the SE2 is that it's basically the same thing as the SE3, just with a slightly older processor, actually a pretty decently older processor. The SE2 is still relatively fast though, and it's pretty usable even on iOS 17 from a speed perspective. This phone's processor is basically on par with the iPhone 11 series from 2019, as it features the A13 chip, which, as I mentioned in last year's iPhone 11 Pro video, it's still pretty usable. It's not a bad processor, I would say, for most people, it would at least do the job, and for a lot of people, it might be better than their current phone. As for the battery life, the biggest complaint about this phone by far from a lot of people, it could definitely be better. This phone's battery lasts a good three to four hours of screen on time for pretty basic usage, and on a FaceTime call or with extended camera usage, it isn't surprising for this phone to last less than two and a half hours. Luckily, it charges up pretty quick with a fast charger at 18 watts. That was a good thing, although it always gets stuck at 80%, it always has, ever since 2020, I don't know why. The battery life on this phone isn't exactly ideal, but with low power mode, it can last a little bit longer. It's also worth mentioning that any iPhone 7 or iPhone 8 battery case will fit and work with this phone, and it also supports wireless charging but not MagSafe. I will note, my battery health is 100% on this phone. The phone's basically brand new. It's a refurbished model from Apple. Uh, I got it replaced in January, so about two, three months ago. But the display on this phone, talking about that for a second, it's pretty good. It's about as good as an iPhone's LCD panel can get. The pixel density is really good, 4.7 inch phone. Colors look great. However, I've had issues with the touch response on all these iPhone SEs especially when it comes to typing. Don't know why, it is actually one of the primary reasons that I returned my SE3. The cameras on this phone aren't really great. Comparing them to something like an iPhone 11, they're still decent. The focus distance on this phone is actually better than any recent iPhone, as this was back when Apple made smaller cameras that can actually focus up close without using an ultra-wide sensor. The camera is really similar, if not the same exact module as the iPhone 8's, it's a 12 megapixel camera, it can also do 4K at 60 FPS recording, and it's just decent overall. It can take some pretty good photos, it can also take bad photos. Lighting is kind of dependent on this phone. Better lighting, of course, means a better photo, but this phone, I think, can take better low light photos than something like an iPhone 6 or 6S. Obviously, it's a newer and better camera. As for the design, this phone used Apple's aluminum rounded edge design. With glass on the front and back, these phones do break pretty easily, and I'm not sure if they use the tougher glass that Apple used on the iPhone X, but I've seen a lot of broken iPhone Xs in public. This phone, unfortunately, still has the home button, and with that, it has pretty thick bezels. I won't say too much on that because it was a budget phone, it's also from 2020. I really do not like the form factor of this phone. 4.7 inch phones should have been phased out with the iPhone 7. And the fact that the mini iPhones managed to put a much larger display into a smaller form factor is just proof that the iPhone SE's design is outdated, and the SE3 also uses this same exact design and form factor. Why is Apple doing this? I don't know. It seems like the SE4 might follow something more similar to an iPhone 13 mini. I'm hoping for that. So this phone is still pretty usable in 2024 if you want it to be. It's not a slow phone by any means. It's just annoying to use. It's a tiny phone with short battery life, an outdated and honestly unintuitive way of interacting with the device with that home button, and it really doesn't have too much value factor due to the fact that the iPhone XR is at this point a sub $200 phone, if not less than $150, with only one processor behind the SE2 and a much newer design. 
I would definitely recommend an iPhone XR or 11 over this phone. I've made my point clear on why I don't think the iPhone XS is a good choice, and I also believe that the iPhone X from 2017 is a somewhat bad purchase in 2024 due to the age of its processor and the now outdated software that it runs. With all that in mind, I don't think the SE 2020 is really worth purchasing, even though it's a pretty fun device to use with its smaller form factor sometimes when I'm not typing on it or doing anything like content consumption. I would just spend the extra money to buy a 10R. It's worth it. Or even an 11, which is probably less than $200 now too. Thank you for watching this video though. If you liked the video, a like would be appreciated, and with that, goodbye.